Hey, it's been a while, but in this new video around AI animation, I wanted to show off some of the very latest tools and techniques in the 3D AI space that you can use to both create models, texture them, retexture them, and animate them all within a single package, plus touch on how you can then bring it into Blender and Adobe After Effects to build up a fuller, wider scene. Plus, I will then show how you can use another new tool to bring some facial animation, lip syncing, and finally, another tool to enhance the overall image as well to create something with even more fidelity. Lots to cover. Um, before I jump into that, I just wanted to show a little sneak peek of a short film I've made using this process, and I'll share the full video of this at the very end as well, just so you get an idea of what you can build if you put all of this together over a bit of time. I didn't choose a known life. A known life chose me. Come on then, boys. Let's go. All right, nice to see you on with the video. So I'm going to be using Meshi and I'll include a link to the website in the video description below. And at the moment you can actually save 50% on a monthly subscription. The link is an affiliate link, so I get a small kickback, which helps me make content like this. And as well as producing models, it also does the texturing and you can retexture as well as now animate models. So I'm gonna take you through that process and show off some of the new features once logged in, you're brought to the Discover page where you can check out other people's generations that they've publicly shared and you can press Remix and then edit the prompt or generate your own model based on similar prompts and you can download the model as well. I'm going to go up to Text to 3D and making sure I'm using the new beta version and we can go ahead and generate some models. Okay, so up in the prompt box here, they've added various quality of life things. So you can now use an extract prompt from image option. So I can drag an image into there Got this 2D illustration of a robot. Let's press generate prompt. And it's written out a nice description for us. This image features a stylized cartoon like robot, etc., etc. The other option is a prompt library where you can just click various prompts here to quickly speed through and get some inspiration for the sort of thing you might want to have in your model. And lastly, you can click this button here and again browse past published generations and take some inspiration. And for our first image generation, I want to create another gnome to put into our cool Peaky Blinders inspired uh, garden scene and I'm going to write out fat garden gnome black hat black suit white shirt black tie T pose character full body just so we can try and prompt to get that T pose shape we need for the animation process later on and then for negative prompts we can click that and again we can use a prompt library to make sure we get something useful and you can write out your own as well and we're going to stick with meshy 3 turbo which is their newer model it's a bit faster and it enables the animation that we're going to be doing shortly and then you can choose a style. They've added a sculpture style and they've added a PBR style, which creates physical based rendering. So you get more accurate lighting and representations when you take it into your 3D software. I think for this first one, I'm gonna put it onto realistic and press generate. Okay, and then after around 20 or so seconds, we have our initial generations and these are fairly low resolution to begin with. I like this guy a lot. I like his button nose. So I'm gonna go down to refine here or up here. Make sure we're on low, medium or high, and this doesn't affect the quality of the mesh, it changes the texture richness. But for this one, I'm gonna choose high and press refine. All right, so then again, very, very quickly, we now have our refined mesh, with some really nice textures in here, and the mesh has just got a higher polygon count than our initial drafts. And you will see there are a few things to fix in our texture, like on top of his nose, on top of the arms, quite like the funky pattern with plants actually on his hat seriously impressive for you know around a minute's work from generating this one to this one we now have this mesh which we can then build on and adapt and use and i think it's really really cool okay so before i jump in and show how we can fix some of these textures i just wanted to quickly show off some of the other generations i've made over the past couple of days whilst working on this project a little squirrel character i might refine one of these i think he looks pretty cool actually got various other squirrels here with a Peaky Blinders style flat cap. And you'll see this one's got the light circulating. So I did this one using the PBR mode and it by default adds this effect, which you can turn off here if you don't want it. But you can play around with the lighting and see how that PBR texture reacts to lighting in the scene. And again, I generated a spoon, which one of my characters might use as a weapon. And again, this is using that PBR mode. I've got this incredibly cute hedgehog character who I think might make it into the final video. And we've got some badges. This one was done in that cartoon style. So it's got a slightly more 2D texture style to it. And you can go through it and refine bits of the texture, which again, I'll show in a second. This was meant to be a funky beetle and I really like it. It's not quite right for the project, but 
there's something about it that's quite charming as there is with this guy and i got quite a few hedgehogs that i really like i love this one really really cute um, and then i did a refined version of one of these and i went through and tidied up some of the textures on him already right jumping back to this guy i'm going to show how we can fix a few of these texture issues we see here very quickly using ai directly within meshy okay so looking at my model there's a few areas i know i want to fix there's bits under the arm which whilst we might not see it in the video we can tidy those up nice and quickly piece on top of the nose the hands on this model aren't fantastic um so i might actually eventually generate a separate hand and then reattach that in blender but other than that i think the texture is probably fine and it's going to be perfect for what i'm going to do but if we zoom in and center the nose in our scene we click on the ai texture editing button here and we can choose smart healing or ai texture editing smart healing is ideal for this nose scenario where we can just load it up here draw a little marquee box around the area press smart healing and in a second or two it's cleared that up and if we wanted to we could draw some bits over there where we're seeing a few other marks i'm going to leave the leaves on the hat i think that's a cool touch press smart healing again and it's smoothed those bits there those seams on the arm and i can press apply to model and this takes around five to ten seconds and again we can click on the character we can then zoom in and see that nose is looking much better and we can use that smart healing brush for under the arms and things like that Okay, so I'm really happy with our character, but I just want to show off the AI texture editing tool, which is really cool. Go over here, choose AI texture editing, and we can draw a box around our character's face and beard. And then I can go up here and write out a texture prompt for something we want to change about this, or I can just import the original again. I think I'll stick with that. We can add a negative prompt if we want to, and we can increase that blur strength. And the higher you go, the bigger the difference from the original image, the original texture. And I'm going to press retexture. And we now have some other textures to choose from. Compared to the original, there's much more clarity and a detail and a, just overall a better quality of image. This guy's got an ever so slightly more menacing look. So uh, he's going to be the winner. And apply to model. Okay, so I'm really happy with my character. Yes, I could carry on refining some of these textures, but I think overall it's shaping up nicely. And yes, I could have generated a few more characters to see if we can get slightly better hands. But for the sakes of this tutorial, I think he's looking pretty cool. I'm just going to quickly take you through the sections up here. We can enable the wireframe, turn the material on and off, tweak display settings, have auto rotation, things like that. You can change the amount of polygons used in your model, change it from triangle to quad. You can also share your model publicly and any that get featured on the Meshi website officially, you'll actually earn an extra 50 free credits to enable you to do future generations, which is really cool. And there's this brand new button called Animation. And I'm going to press Animate, which brings up this new UI box. And there's a bit of information here about good examples and bad examples. So do have your character in a T pose or an A pose. Don't have your character with the limbs covering the body um, and in the future they are going to support our four-legged furry friends but right now it's just bipeds humanoids so i'm going to go ahead and press next and here if your character isn't already correctly aligned with the center you can rotate them you can vary the offset if you need to and you can vary the height and press next and you can enable symmetry and move the various points around and we can turn off symmetry if any of these are not wide where you want them and press next and there we have our character walking and that just took a few seconds to do and if you've ever used something like mixamo for 3d character animation or perhaps with meshy models in the past very similar process and they currently support walking and running animations i love the style of his walk he's a man on a mission he's got a purpose now there is obviously some warping around the beard um, and that's more about the character design that i was trying to aim for uh, if you had a skinnier model, someone without a big bushy beard, you would get less of that and you'd get a slightly cleaner uh, distortion to the mesh. But in this video, this is the kind of character I was aiming for. And you can download this. And when you download, it will download both the walking and the running samples in a single zip file. And now I'm going to move over to Blender, which is a free 3D package. And I'm going to quickly show how you can change the texture of our character so it works in Adobe After Effects plus show how you can blend the walking and the running animations to create a seamless transition. So with Blender open in a brand new scene, I'm going to highlight the initial components and delete those, and then go up to File, Import, FBX, and navigate to where I've downloaded the walking and running. 
And to start with, I'm going to open up the animation walking file and press import. And we can zoom in and we can see we have our mesh here. If I press the button up here in the top right, it will turn the textures on. And we have our character walking and it does one single walk cycle and it doesn't repeat yet. So first of all, I want to change these textures because they've actually got light emission built into them. So I'm going to drop down our texture here, down to character, double click on material, scroll down the material settings. And where it says emission, we're going to click there and just click remove. And we're going to drop down that metallic value and the specular as well. If we'd left that emission setting on when we take our character into Adobe After Effects, they're less affected or not at all affected by any lights we put in our scene. Go up here and we're just going to rename this armature to walking, just so we know which one we're working with. And we're going to go down to the timeline and click the button on the left. And we're going to go up and choose non-linear animation or NLA. That changes the mode we're in here. We can just drag that up and you'll see we have our armature animation here and I'm going to press this button here which will push down the action which essentially turns it into this component which we can duplicate extend and blend it with other animations we can then click on our action here drop down the action clip menu on the right and we can increase the repeats so we can set that to five and our character will now loop multiple times next I'm going to import the other FBX for our running it's brought our character in on top hold down shift and press the hide button here on the walking just to hide that character briefly so with that running one selected again in the nla we're going to press that push down action button with it selected increase the repeat so let's set that to a five as well i'm then going to go back and actually hold down shift and hide that running layer unhide the walking one with the walking selected we can go into the nla again click on the walking layer we've got here the walking action press add, add action strip. And we're gonna choose the new one, which has got the word running in it. Okay, so we have our running layer and our walking, but at the moment, no animation happens when we're on the walking and it just shows the running. And to fix this, we can click on our running layer and set a blend in value. Let's put 10 for now. So we should find that we go from walking and it blends into the running as we move into it. We can drag that along the timeline so we go from a walk to a run. If you wanted to, you could bring in one of those walking or running FBXs again, edit the animation on them, maybe delete most of the keyframes, but set some new idle keyframes yourself. So the character's just moving slightly, breathing before blending into the walk and then into the run. So we could build out this scene in Blender, but now that Adobe After Effects supports GLB files and animated GLB files, I'm going to show you how you can export this animation as a GLB or a GLTF and take it into Adobe After Effects. So I'm gonna click on the running and just delete that file. We don't need him anymore. And I can then go file, export, GLTF. We're gonna save a GLB file. And if we drop down the animation tag here, I'm gonna change the animation from actions to scene, untick split animation by object. And that should help combine those two actions we're blending together and ensure when we open it in Adobe After Effects, it's just seen as one long piece of animation and not two separate options. Everything else we can leave the same and press export. And now I've jumped over to Adobe After Effects and I am using version 24.5 so we can bring in the file we just exported. Drag that file in, click on the GLB file, drag it down to the new composition button. We have our character, just drag them down in the scene. And if we drag along on the timeline you'll see there is no animation applied yet we click on that layer double tap a go down to animation options and on the drop down we can choose our scene animation and now when we play through we have our character walking and merging into that run and we can right click in the timeline press new create a camera we can right click again press new add a solid and i'm going to create a light gray floor Press the button here to make that a 3D layer as well. You'll see it's now in 3D space. Press R, X axis, 180 degrees. And we can drag that down so it cuts off our character's feet slightly. Next, I'm going to bring in a HDR image and this is one that I've got available on my system. You could use something like Blockade Labs, which allows you to create HDR images using an AI text prompt, which is very cool but I've covered that in previous videos before, so I won't touch on that today. 
drop it onto the timeline. We can hide that. Then I'm going to right click on the timeline, press new, choose light. For light type, I'm going to choose environment. And then within the light options, we're going to choose Studio One, which is the name of that HDR map. And I can drop that intensity from 760 down to 100, and we can play around with that lighting. And you see there is a nice little shadow on the floor there. We can go to the advanced 3D setting here, press render options, and depending on the capability of your system, you can play around with the render quality, smoothness, increase the resolution, things like that. And if you press fit to scene, it will create a shadow box which will cover the width, the dimensions of that floor plane we've put in, as well as our character. So if you increase your scene over time, you might want to come back here and increase it. But the bigger it is, the harder it is for your system to process the shadows and things like that. But I'm going to go ahead and press fit to scene. And it changes it to a 1920 shadow box and we get much crisper shadows. Great. With that done, I can actually then increase the size of our floor without needing a bigger shadow box because we don't want any shadows over here anyway. And on our environment light, we can actually drop down transform and play around with the rotation so that we get the brighter part of the environment map applied to our character. And he's looking okay. And if you want to speed up your system, you could turn off the environment light briefly and it should run much smoother. I'm going to turn that back on whilst I add a couple more lights just to enhance the scene a little bit more. Press light. I'm going to choose a spotlight. It's got a slight blue tone. Intensity is 100. If we go over here and change view from one view to two views, and in this one, I'm in the top view, I can press C to cycle through camera controls, zoom out a bit, scroll my mouse wheel to zoom in, and click on our spotlight and move it in the scene. So we can just add a slight blue edge. Press T to bring up intensity, tilt it up so we're not getting much of the blue on the floor, but we do get this little blue highlight on the edge of our character, which is quite nice. And then I'm going to duplicate our spotlight. I can double click on that second light and change the color. And you can see how you can build up a scene. One last step before I export this and show you a trick where we can add some facial animation. I'm just going to right click, press new, a solid, and just add a plain white background. Drop that to the bottom. I'm not going to make it a 3D layer and that just lives at the back of our scene. I'm going to move to the four second mark on our timeline and just press N. So this is the area I'm going to render out as a quick test. With our camera selected, I'm going to drop down the transform properties, set some keyframes for point of interest and position. I'm actually going to point that point of interest so it's actually on our character. Move to the beginning of the timeline and then on our position, just going to increase the X axis and you can see the camera moving around our character. So as we play through, we get a little pan around the front of our character. I'm just going to render this out. So I'm going to go composition, add to render queue, and it adds a preset for an MP4. And I'm just going to set a destination for that and render it out. Okay, and now I want to show how we can add some facial animation to our character, adding some lip sync. And I want to do that using this brand new tool called Live Portrait, which you can install locally and run essentially for free. And Tim from Theoretically Media had a great video showing the tool off and showing how you can install it locally using a tool called Pinocchio. Or alternatively, you can follow the guide in their GitHub page to install it yourself locally. And you may hit a few issues as you install it, but it is possible. And that's what I've got running here today. So with it open, we can change to source video and import our render. And you then need to add a driving video. And there are some examples here. And I've recorded this slightly embarrassing video I quickly set up a plain background and made sure the lighting was okay to help give the AI the best possible chance of detecting my face. I also made sure it was saved out at 30 frames per second to match our animation, and I cropped it to a square inside of After Effects. I'm a man on a mission. Oh yeah. For the source video, I'm leaving do crop on and leaving do crop off for my driving video, and then I just press animate. Okay, and it's completed in around one or so minutes, and it's done a really nice job. I'm a man on a mission. Oh, yeah. Now, I have tried out quite a few different clips before using Live Portrait, and you need to make sure you've got good lighting on your character, um, and also making sure they're relatively human, normal looking. It works very well with real life photos. So if you're having a stylized character, it needs to be someone who looks pretty human. It also exports this cool video, giving you a comparison of yourself the original and the treated version. I'm a man on a mission. 
Oh, yeah. Very cool. And we can go ahead and press download. I've then hopped over to Korea.ai to try out their new AI video enhancer, which is really very cool, and it actually upscales the image, the video, at the same time. So on the enhancer page, I'm going to drop our video clip in here, and it analyzes the image and writes out the prompt, which describes the scene. We're going to leave it on upscaling factor. You can do two times if you're on their max tier. Leave the frame rate at 30 frames per second, and we'll leave the strength and resemblance just as the default settings, and change the preset to cinematic and press Enhance. Okay, and after a few minutes, it's completed processing this four second clip. This is the original, and we can drag across to see the new enhanced version. And there's lovely detail on the arms and those folds and creases, and his suit's got a certain leathery feel to it. Um, and there's tons of detail in the beard. There are some bits where it goes slightly wrong and you get this extra blue hair around the side and there's some movement on the texture on the hat. And here's another test where I use the animation preset with the strength quite low and the resemblance quite high. It's got a much more cartoon feel. There was a little bit of morphing here and there, but actually a really nice style of animation. And again, you could probably refine this in something like Topaz Video AI, or you could drop the frame rate even lower to eight or 12 frames per second and get a more stop motion animation feel to it. And in this other test clip where I had some gnomes running in the rain, as I spin across, you'll see the extra fidelity that Korea adds. There's much more detail in the beard and there's actual individual strands of hair and the creases and everything. There's just a lot more quality being added to the image. It's not free, but it is upscaling our clip as well as improving the overall detail. I've quickly opened up 11 labs, dropped in the audio from our little clip using their speech to speech filter, choosing an AI artist and generating a new audio. I'm a man on a mission. Oh, yeah. Nice. I'm a man on a mission. Oh, yeah. I'm a man on a mission. Oh, yeah. Okay, then. That brings us to the end of the main tutorial portion of this video. In a second, I'll share a much longer clip where I had multiple creatures, animals, um, and gnomes in a battle sequence using all the same processes you've seen throughout this tutorial, bringing it together in After Effects with lighting, camera moves, and I added a ton of stock rain footage and some lens flares, maybe a bit too much, um, and some dramatic music which I grabbed off of a stock website. As always, please press subscribe, like, comment, um, and do check out Meshi.ai, who are definitely one of the leaders in the 3D AI space, and start creating some cool models and think of great ways that you can animate them. And I'm sure in the future, there'll be more than just walking and running. But either way, having that rigged character that you can take into Blender or your chosen 3D package and reanimate it however you want is really handy. So um, thanks very much for Meshi for sponsoring this video and taking me out of YouTube hibernation. Get creative. Thanks very much. Have an awesome day. Cheers. Ready, lads? I didn't choose a gnome life, a gnome life chose me. Come on then boys, let's go.